Yo, what is up, people? Welcome to day eight of my I Am Challenge. And today we're going to go over our back. Now, yesterday I posted on LinkedIn some really good information on our back, like what it is, how it works, and the benefits of our back. But today we're actually going to dive in and do a hands on project so I can demonstrate how our back works in an AWS environment and how to implement our back in an AWS environment. Now, what we're going to do is essentially set up a group which is going to be a developers group and we're going to create a user that will be a developer and we're going to provide the appropriate permissions and policies to the developers group so that the user can inherit the developer permissions to do their job so if that's something you want to learn let's hop into my screen so we're in my aws organization and we're going to start the rbac process but first let's talk about it what exactly is rbac so RBAC in the simplest manner is simply providing a user permissions via a group or a role to do their job, nothing more. So they're not going to get extra access. They're going to get the least privilege of access to do their job. That is it. So for example, in this use case, we're going to set up a new developers group because our organization has just hired a few developers and one starts Monday. So we need to set up this new user's account and provision the appropriate permissions uh, as a new developer. But we're not going to assign the permissions directly to the user. We're going to actually create a group, call it developers, and then we're going to attach the appropriate permissions to the developers group. And then we're going to add that user to that developer group so that we can manage access from a granular perspective. That way it makes uh, access management simplified, uniform, and it just makes it a lot more compliant. So let's hop into I am within my AWS console. So if it's not bookmarked here, we can search I am. Click it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the developers group. So we're going to user groups. And again, this is the most simplest way to show you what RBAC looks like in an organization or even just AWS. So we'll create the group and we'll name it developers. Uh -oh. We're not going to add any users, any permissions. We're just going to create the user group because I want to show you how it looks just bare bones. Now note that user groups don't come with any permissions. So you have to manually add the permissions you desire for that respective group. So as you can see, there are no permissions defined. That's because there are no permissions that come with user groups. So we're going to define those permissions in a second. But as you can see, there aren't any users associated with this developer group at all. And once we create our test user, we'll add that user here. But this is how a group looks upon creation with no users no permissions. So now let's go into the developers group and let's add the permissions needed to fulfill the developer role. So we know that in our organization, the developers need access to EC2 and S3, but not just any level of access. They need full access. So we're going to add the full access to S3 and EC2 for the developers group. So we're gonna to go to permissions, add permission, attach policies. We're gonna search S3. All right, select that, EC2. All right, attach policy. Okay, so now if you look at the permission policy summary, there are two permissions attached to the developers group. So what that means is any user that is added to the developers group will automatically inherit these permissions. And this is an example of role-based access control. So instead of adding permissions, these permissions directly to the user, we won't do that because that's not scalable. Instead, we add the user to the group and we can manage permissions from a granular level simply from the group. So if we wanted to add additional permissions, to our developers group, we would simply go back to add permissions, attach policy, and the same thing goes. We would just select the policy we need to add to the developers group. 
but we're not going to add any more so we'll select cancel and let's go ahead and create our user so we can test out everything so we're going to create user and that username is going to be Vaughn. we're not going to provide aws management console access just right this second select next we're not going to add her to any groups we're not going to add any policy just select next create user all right so as you can see Vaughn has been created uh, she has no groups, no activity, no nothing. Only thing she has is an ARN and the fact that she has no console access. But since we've done any, we we haven't done anything to this user. Let's go ahead and give her uh, console access, so we'll enable that. So we'll open up Vaughn's account, go to security credentials, and enable console access. We're going to create a custom password. All right, we'll enable it. All right, so let's copy this console URL and then we'll open up an incognito browser and test this out. All right, so Vaughn, put in the password. All right, so right now Vaughn doesn't have any type of permissions. We know that she's a new developer and we need to add her to the developers group, but let's just test out what she sees when she tries to access specific services. So for EC2, let's see what happens. She gets a lot of errors, right? This is an access restriction error, meaning she doesn't have access to view these specific things. Let's go to instances. All right, same thing goes. You are not authorized to perform this operation. Let's try S3. All right, don't have permission to list buckets. Okay, so now that we have confirmation that Vine cannot do or view anything within the AWS environment, let's add her to the developers group and let's see what happens once her access has been provisioned. So we're gonna close this out. We're gonna go to the user groups and we're gonna go to developers and we're gonna add Vaughn to this group. All right, so Vaughn has been added. Let's go back and let's refresh the screen here in Vaughn's account, and it should show that she can create a bucket. So there are no more error messages uh, stating, stating any access restrictions. Let's create a bucket, and boom, Vaughn can create a bucket within S3 because she has inherited the permissions from the developers group. And then let's actually test out EC2 just to confirm she has access to EC2. Okay, so Yvonne doesn't have access to the health dashboard and she can't see any forecasts or any financial uh, information. So that is the reason why she's getting these errors. But if she was provisioned access to these services, then she would definitely be able to see this information. So we're not going to worry about these sections here. But what we're going to do is go to instances and we're going to just confirm if Vaughn has any errors and she doesn't. Let's select launch instance. And as you can see, Vaughn has the ability to launch instances. So let's recap. So in this video, we went over setting up an RBAC within AWS. So basically, we created a new group called the developers group. We attached the appropriate permissions, which is Amazon EC2 for access and Amazon S3 for access. And then we added our user, which is Vaughn. And we confirmed that Vaughn has full access to both tools. This is a simplified way to implement RBAC. And that puts an end to this cloud project. I hope that I've made RBAC easy to understand.